So, you want to build a website, but you're not sure whether to use WordPress or Webflow. Well, in today's video, we're going to compare each platform over five core areas so you can decide for yourself which one you think fits your particular use case. Hello, everybody. My name is Sam Harrison, and I run a web design and development business based here in the UK. And full disclosure, I've been using WordPress for a number of years, but most recently I switched to using Webflow as my primary tool of choice in the last four years or so. I still like and use both tools. A lot of people that use one particular tool get quite tribal about what they think is best. In this video, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to try and give you an honest appraisal of both sides so you can see for yourself what you think fits your particular use case. So first of all, we're going to talk about the actual experience of building a website inside each of these tools. And we'll start with Webflow. So Webflow, the actual building experience of Webflow is one of the core reasons why I actually made the switch over to the platform in the first place. Webflow is actually essentially a visual coding tool. And whilst the complexity is also a slight negative in the sense that it actually is a little bit more difficult to get to grips with initially, once you've got to grips with it, it's the best UI of any page builder I think you can actually find. And a lot of page builders actually have sort of maybe borrowed ideas from Webflow as well. In terms of how to actually build in Webflow, on the left hand side you have an elements panel. It's from here, you can actually drag and drop various different structural elements and things like headings and text onto the page. Then this big panel over here on the right hand side is your styling panel. And this panel is used, as you might have guessed it, to actually style how your website actually looks. Now, whilst this panel looks a little bit daunting at first, having your styling panel always available is actually a huge positive. In a lot of WordPress page builders, you find yourself having to constantly switch back and forth between lots of different tabs just to find the settings that you like. Another huge benefit of Webflow is that we have lots of things all integrated in one tool. So with WordPress, for example, if you want to have kind of custom animations or you want to have some kind of custom post types or custom CMS collections, as we call it in Webflow, you have to use plugins to do that. However, with Webflow being an all-in-one platform, you have animations and all these other things already built in. You don't really use plugins as such with Webflow. Webflow animations is one of the aspects that makes Webflow so special, and the fact it integrates with lots of different elements inside of Webflow as well. You can pretty much animate anything you want to inside of Webflow, right down to really fine details. For instance, if you want to animate a hamburger icon on a mobile menu, for example, you can actually create that yourself and then control down to the last tiny little thing how you actually want that to actually look. If you try and do this in WordPress, there aren't many builders that offer this as a native functionality. In fact, I don't think any of them do it to quite the same level of complexity that you can do inside of Webflow. You'd have to use third party tools to do that, which is fine. But the benefit of having this all baked into one product I mean everything works seamlessly together. In terms of page builders inside of WordPress, there's a whole host of different options to choose from. You have the basic inbuilt block editor that comes with WordPress. You also have popular builders like Elementor, Breakdance Builder, Divi, Oxygen Builder, and Bricks Builder. And all of these different builders are aimed at slightly different types of users. Some are aimed at complete beginners, and some like Oxygen Builder and Bricks Builder are aimed at the kind of people that might actually want to use Webflow as well. And in fact, Oxygen Builder and Bricks Builder in particular give you quite a Webflow-like experience. So those two would definitely get my vote when it came to WordPress page builders. However, to get the same kind of functionality that Webflow does baked in, you would have to use third party tools or plugins to get the kind of animations feature that you get inside of Webflow, you'd have to use something like Motion Page to give you that same kind of functionality. So of course, the benefit with WordPress here is that you have a whole host of different builders that you can actually choose from and find one that fits you. Whereas with Webflow, of course, the builder is the builder and that's what you're going to be using. However, I would argue that Webflow's UI is the best out of all of them. The main reason being is that all of your styling is all in one place and Webflow have just really nailed it when it comes to their UI. So next up, we're going to talk about the content management system or CMS, and we'll start by talking about Webflow. So Webflow CMS, in my opinion, is majorly underrated. A lot of people think Webflow is just kind of a, a static site builder with fancy animations, but there's a lot more you can actually do with it. And I personally use the CMS all the time for all my client work. So why would you actually want to use the CMS at all? So there are two main ways you can think about this. 
The one hand, you have the Webflow editor feature, which is great for your clients if they want to come in and actually start changing aspects of the site without having access to the designer, which I heavily recommend. And we also have the option to actually use the CMS to use it basically as a database for certain information. So for example, if you want to create a blog, this is an example of where you'd use the Webflow CMS to do that. And you'd use the CMS for anything also that requires some kind of templated design. Generally, blog posts have the same kind of layout. You don't want to have to be creating the same page over and over and over again. This would be an example of where you would use the Webflow CMS to create this main blog template uh, that would then basically allow you to enter in the data however you want to, and it will repeat the same design throughout the entire website. So when it comes to WordPress, WordPress, of course, is the most popular CMS in the world. WordPress still powers about half of the internet at this point in time, so obviously it's tried and tested. And to get the same kind of functionality that you do inside of Webflow when it comes to creating CMS collections, you would use a plugin called ACF, or Advanced Custom Fields, or something called Metabox to create custom post types. Now, blogging functionality is already baked into WordPress. However, let's say you want to create some kind of team member section or like a real estate listing, which you can also do with Webflow as well by using the Webflow CMS and collection lists. In WordPress, you would use one of these tools to create what's called custom post types, which lets you create a database of specific information relating to whatever topic you want to create for it. One thing I'm not so keen on in WordPress is the dashboard user interface. Again, it's functional, but it really massively needs to be updated. It's looked like this as long as I can remember, and it's not the prettiest of things. However, with it being an open source platform, if you know what you're doing, you can actually change the CSS yourself to make it look however you want to. And of course, there's always a plugin to do something like this to actually change it to however you want to. So next up, we're gonna talk about hosting, maintenance, and security. So if you're using WordPress, you actually have to do quite a bit more than you would do if you're using Webflow. With WordPress, you have to sort out your own hosting yourself. You then have to install any plugins that you need to make the site function the way you want it to. And you also have to also contend with security plugins as well. With Webflow, this is not a thing at all. You don't have to worry about any of this. All of this is taken care of by Webflow. And this is one of the other key reasons that I found myself switching away from using WordPress full time over to Webflow. And the reason being is that it's just such a huge time saver. With using WordPress, there's always that slight anxiety about something breaking. If you're, if you're a professional and you know what you're doing, this shouldn't be too much of an issue. However, if your client has access to the site and they want access to be able to upload plugins themselves, this can cause problems. And it requires a developer or someone who's familiar with WordPress to actually keep it working properly. When you actually have core WordPress updates or you have plugin updates, sometimes these things can clash and sometimes things can go wrong. So you actually have to make sure you test these things before pushing your site live whenever you do that. A common mistake that people tend to make is that they leave auto updates enabled without actually testing any of these updates first before pushing the site live. Again, if you know what you're doing, this isn't a huge issue, but if you don't, you will potentially run into some problems if you're using WordPress. By comparison, if you're using Webflow, hosting, security, and all that kind of thing is all taken care of for you. The possibility of getting hacked by using Webflow is a lot slimmer a chance than if you were using WordPress. With Webflow, they'd have to just guess your password. As long as you're using something like two-factor authentication, you're not bulletproof, but as close to being bulletproof as you possibly can be. With WordPress, there's a lot more of anxiety about that kind of thing happening. And if your client has access to the site, this is where things can go wrong sometimes. However, to be fair to WordPress, this is not an issue if you are experienced with WordPress. However, if you're just getting started with the platform, there's actually quite a bit to learn and there are some things you actually have to know how to actually make these things work together properly. So that's the slight difference here. And I think Webflow does have a leg up when it comes to this kind of thing. Next up, we're going to be talking about e-commerce functionality. Now, this is kind of an easy win for WordPress. As it currently stands, Webflow, in terms of the features that it has, 
just isn't quite there at the moment. Things like having certain payment processes that you can use in WordPress, you can't use in Webflow. Webflow does restrict you to what it allows you to use. Whereas with WordPress, of course, you can actually integrate anything that you want to. So there are some certain limitations that Webflow has. That means it's not ideal for everyone. And I would say personally that Webflow's e-commerce is, is fine if the primary sort of part of the website is not the actual e-commerce store. If it's a secondary thing, then I think Webflow is totally fine for a very small basic store. However, if you wanted to actually have the primary purpose of the site be an e-commerce store, then WordPress definitely wins out here for all manner of other reasons too. For instance, in Webflow currently, you don't have things like user accounts. So users can't have their own profile page where they can see what their past orders have been. You can't do that inside of Webflow. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that WordPress's version of e-commerce is in the form of a plugin called WooCommerce. And this plugin is completely free to use. It's pretty hard to beat free. With Webflow, you actually have to pay a little bit more for an e-commerce hosting plan as well. And they also charge fees on top of that in terms of transaction fees too. So when it comes to e-commerce, I definitely think Webflow has some ground to make up here. Again, it's, it's probably going to be a case in the future where Webflow allows third-party developers to kind of have apps that integrate with Webflow to kind of give you this functionality. But as it stands, there are just too many things missing from the platform for it to compete properly with something like WordPress or even Shopify, which again is another potential option to consider. And last but not least, we have cost. Now, WordPress itself is actually free to use. And WordPress hosting also tends to be a little bit cheaper than Webflow, although it's not necessarily a fair comparison because with Webflow, of course, you get the use of the builder and everything else that's already baked into the platform as well. With WordPress, you have to pay for the builder. In terms of how much that costs, it depends very much on what page builder you're using. Some have you paying a monthly fee, some a yearly fee, and some are just a one-time fee like Bricks Builder, for example, which is just a one-time fee and it's yours forever, which of course is a, a, an amazing amazing deal. However, with Webflow, it is a SaaS platform, so you are going to be paying a monthly or a yearly fee to keep using it. Now, when you look at the Webflow pricing, it can get a little bit confusing. It's kind of a running joke at the moment that Webflow's pricing page is more complicated than quantum physics. But I'll try and get it a little bit more simplified for you if I can. Now, if you want to just get your website live, you want to choose the site plan option within the Webflow pricing page, and you want to probably choose either the base or the CMS plan, which will be either $18 a month or $29 a month. The basic plan doesn't give you any option to use the Webflow CMS, whereas the CMS plan, of course, does give you that option, and then you can use that for things like blogs or real estate listings or whatever you want to use the CMS for. Okay, so those are some core considerations to make when choosing between Webflow and WordPress. Ultimately, both platforms have positives and negatives, and which one you choose will probably depend on what kind of websites you're making for yourself or for your clients. Some of the benefits of WordPress is that it is an open source platform, meaning you can change it however you want to, and it's infinitely scalable. There are no real limitations being put upon you. Unlike in Webflow, for example, Webflow do have some limitations. There are CMS limitations as well in terms of how many different CMS items you can have. In WordPress, this is not a thing at all. It's infinitely scalable. However, that kind of open source nature and the fact you can do whatever you want does have a trade-off in the sense you have to know a little bit about how WordPress works or learn how to actually maintain the website that you've made. You can't really just make a WordPress website and leave it forever. It won't necessarily be working when you come back to it in a year's time. With Webflow, that's not the case at all. With Webflow, everything is taken care of for you. All of the functionality that you need is actually all baked into the product. So if you want to have animations or you want to have a, a CMS of different content, it's all baked into the product and you don't need to have anything external and you don't need to manage anything either. So Webflow takes care of security, takes care of hosting. You can literally just build it and that's it. You don't have to do anything else. Whereas with WordPress, it's an ongoing thing. You'll always have to maintain it in some way. Okay, I hope you found that useful. Let me know in the comments below which platform you prefer and why, and I will see you in the next video.